Hi guys, this is Pastor Ernest and I just want to encourage you with some words in this episode of the weekly widget. Um, for those of you who are wondering what this is, this is going to be coming to you weekly by God's grace to encourage you in the word of God on specific things that you should know for the Christian journey. And if you're a part of Bible Marathon Group, you are currently journeying, journeying with us on the year of the scriptures trip right and so we are reading through the old testament this year and it's been so exciting already a week is passed and this is just supposed to be like a widget on that journey like it, it, think of it as a little pit stop or you could even think of it as a lap and um, just something very simple that you can go with on this journey um, let's just pray a little bit. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, as your word comes forth, it encourages us and it helps us walk the narrow. It helps us walk with faith and with patience. And it encourages our hearts for the journey ahead. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. It's a very simple word I have for you today, and it's from Paul's writing to the Romans in Romans chapter 12 from verse 1. We're going to read from verse 1 and into verse 2, and you're going to see something very profound. He says, I appeal to you, therefore, this is from the ESV, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And then he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Man, have you ever been in a situation where you are wondering what God wants you to do with your life? Have you had questions about what God would expect from you? Well, you don't need to look very far. This is what God expects from you. You have to understand the context of Romans 12. Romans 12 is a response to an exegetical, deep, you know, uh, homiletics from Romans 1 all the way to Romans chapter 11. Paul was trying to explain to these people who they are, what God has done in Christ Jesus, how they are freed from sin, all the victories that we have won because we have the Spirit of God in us. And so based on this and God's promise to Israel and to the Gentiles and all of that, Paul wraps it up with a very simple point. And that point is, based on all the information prior to this, I'm begging you, here's what to do with your life. And he says, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. What is a living sacrifice? That's an oxymoron. An oxymoron basically is two opposing ideas put together. So when you say living sacrifice, you need to realize that in the Old Testament, sacrifices were animals that were killed and put on an altar. They're dead. They can't do anything. And he says, be a living sacrifice. In other words, be a living dead. Now that's marvelous. That's mind blowing. He says, be a living sacrifice. Present yourself. So you might not feel that way, but present yourself that way you might want to resist the will of god and do your own thing but no live as a sacrifice now what kind of sacrifice it has to be holy and acceptable to god and he says that is your true spiritual act of worship the true worship the true service to god the true sacrifice is your body given to god as a living offering and here's how that will happen. Verse 2 is the secret. You see, to know the will of God, you must pay attention to this. Because he's about to say you will discern the will of God through this. He says, do not be conformed to this world. What does he mean by this world? You may just look at that word and just think, yes, it means the world. But he's talking about specific um world not just the world not cosmos which just means uh, you know what we can see and touch and feel but he's talking about the greek word aeon and aeon has to do with the times 
the culture, the people and what they believe, the system, you know, the ideologies. That's what he's talking about. A dispensation. It could mean any of those things. Periods, you know, age, time, universe. So don't think of it as don't be conformed to the world. In fact, how would you be conformed to the world? You can't be. But in, in the correct understanding of it as aeon, he's saying don't be conformed to the style of living of the world. Don't be conformed to their ideologies, to their thinking, how they reason. You know, many people think life is just about coming here and having fun. Don't be conformed to that. Some people think you live your life as you want. But no, Paul says you are a living sacrifice. Don't be conformed to the world. Don't think the way the world thinks. He says, be transformed. I love this word. The Greek word there is, to, is, is the word we get in English as metamorphosis. It's a transition. It's a changing. It's a process, procedural change. So what is he saying here? He's saying, I don't want you to look like the world. I don't want you to fit into their mold, their systems, their way of thinking. But be changed. It's a process. Be changed. Be transformed. By what? And here's the key thing. By a process. And that process is called metanoia. It's, 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 it's like transformation of the mind. It's like, you know, editing how you think. It's called renewing, to birth a new. Um, and so he says, by the renewing of your mind, you know, it's the idea of reformation. It's the idea of renovation. You know, when you walk into a house, you know, and you've lived there for a while, at some point, either maybe you're moving to a new place or you've just lived there for 10, 20 years, it might be time to renovate. And that's the picture here. It's like it has certain things fixed in certain places, but now you have to pull them out of there and rearrange things, take things that are old out and bring new things in. Well, that's the picture of what God wants for us. He says, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed, be changed, become a new person by renewing your mind. You know, the most powerful thing you must get from this is that your mind is the most malleable and the most powerful tool that God has given to you. It's malleable, meaning it can pick up on things. It can be conformed to any ideas. It's in mind. It's, it's like a sponge. It takes in what it is soaked in. But you see, the Bible is very clear. Renew it. Guess who is doing the renewal? You. There is an intentionality to renewing your mind. There is an intentionality to thinking differently, to renovating how your mind works. And you see, it's so important because when you do this, then you will know the will of God. That's what he tells us. He says that you may prove, that you may prove. The, the, you know, the Greek word there, and I'm going here because it's important, is dokimato. And dokimato just means to test, to try, to, um, by examination, become a judge of. That's so profound. When you know the will of God, which comes by, renewing your mind, then you can judge accurately. You can judge what is right before God. You know, there are a lot of ideas in our time and our day that make you think you are behind. You know, there's some ideas that are communicated that make you feel less than you ought to. You know, come ideas that just make you feel like there is more beyond the scope of what God has instructed us. And you see, those ideas are dangerous. And so when you renew your mind, when you start seeing things the way God wants you to see them, oh my, all of a sudden, everything begins to make sense. The will of God is no longer a mystery. It becomes clear because number one, you're a living sacrifice. It's not no longer your will, but his will. And then not only are you a living sacrifice, and are you sold out to God? You have renewed your mind or are in the process of renewing your mind. So what you are thinking are thoughts that align with his will. And guess what 
is produced out of that. What is good, what is acceptable, what is perfect. A lot of people teach that it's three degrees of the will of God. I don't think that's what scripture is teaching here. It's just saying that the will of God is perfect. The will of God is good and the will of God is acceptable. It's good because it's God <laughs> that gave that. It is acceptable because that is what God receives um, from you. And it's perfect because there's nothing better than that. And that's what this is all about. So I hope this really blessed you. I hope you will take steps with this weekly widget on how you would live practically in your interaction with people. Remember, don't be conformed to this world and the way it works and the way it thinks, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So as you continue to read through the scriptures this year, let it change how you think. Let it change how you interpret ideas because God's word is truth. God bless you guys. Take care.